The reach of the global economy has made the world increasingly smaller, while at the same time making challenges such as swine flu seemingly larger. While health officials have had the benefit of an unprecedented level of disease surveillance, they too also face increasing pressure to provide timely reports and guidance on the outbreak. Beginning with the click of a button, GeoTime turns the pressures and complexity of time into a feature by allowing you to use the temporal dimension to reveal previously hidden data. GeoTime provides a comprehensive 2D view where you can view the disease spread. You can see the number of reports of swine flu in each month and its geographic dispersal. But, as time passes by, the value of added data begins to diminish. Newer data points begin to obscure older data points. GeoTime's patented 3D view emphasizes the temporal dimension on the vertical axis, making each data point increasingly useful in detecting geotemporal patterns associated with swine flu. By applying the color filter, it becomes clear that the disease began sustained transmission towards the end of April. GeoTime works on the scale of your data, allowing you to move closer to your desired macro or micro view. Using the timeline controls, we zoom in from April 22nd to April 30th, where we can see cases begin to accumulate in several parts of North America. Not only can we zoom from the global to the continental scale, but also the regional scale. Here, we begin to see the emergence of a particular cluster. We can see the sustained transmission of disease in Mexico and the United States along the southern border. The disease has spread to other parts of North America, but has not sustained itself in these locations over time. This is an important observation. With a wide variety of annotation options, GeoTime allows analysts to annotate observations they make. With a color annotation, we can label this cluster to add context to our observation. Using GeoTime's reporting capabilities, this observation can be further described. We can then export and share this report with other analysts once we're done making our observations. We can also include a snapshot of this observation, which appears hyperlinked in the report. Clicking on the hyperlink recalls this specific observation, no matter what you do with the data after. Once complete, a series of collected snapshots, along with notes we've made in the report panel, tells a story about the emergence of the flu. By April 27th, there was a sustained transmission of swine flu. This corresponds to the World Health Organization's criteria for pandemic level 4. At level 5, we can see that the disease has sustained itself in two countries, the United States and Mexico, both within one WHO region. By level 6, the pandemic is full-blown and has sustained itself in at least one other WHO region. Swine flu, notable for being the fastest growing pandemic ever, has spread globally at this point. Using the charts feature, GeoTime allows you to filter by user-defined data fields when other methods become difficult. For example, this data set includes both fatal and non-fatal reports of swine flu. We can apply a color filter to distinguish fatal cases in red from non-fatal reports in blue. Additionally, we can choose which subset we wish to analyze. Filtering for only fatal reports of swine flu, we can see different clusters forming. Again, we spot one in Mexico which verifies the consistency of a previous finding. A large group of fatalities suggests that there must be a high incidence rate of the disease itself here. This data would be significantly relevant to epidemiologists, international travelers, and policymakers deciding where vaccination attempts would make the most impact. We can easily select the data in our observation, move closer, and create an annotation we plan on keeping in the report we started earlier. With help from the meeting finder, we've now found several additional clusters in other parts of the world we could not previously see and added them to the reports panel. These clusters leave questions to be answered and we will visit them again later. 
Although identifying geographic clusters of swine flu is useful on its own, we can increase the value of our analysis by correlating this data with other events and data sources. For example, here you can see a cluster of reports that come from all over the United Kingdom on July 23, 2009. When we Google this date, we can see that this is the day the National Swine Flu Hotline opened. Perhaps there weren't more cases on this day, but recorded incidences increased simply because it was easier to report. Geotime also allows analysts the ability to add multiple data sets in order to correlate and enhance observations. For example, we can include flight data of travelers who were the first reported cases of swine flu in their country. We can hide the swine flu data in order to isolate our new data. Both data sets can be viewed together or separately. Isolating just the flight data, we can observe movements of passengers as they carry the swine flu from one country to another. The path of their flight is represented by a line connecting their departure point to the point in time where the onset of flu is reported. Using the snapshots taken in a report panel earlier, we can correlate recorded observations with the new flight data in GeoTime. With a few simple clicks, not only can we overlap the two data sets, but we can also make a new significant observation. Many of the flights to other countries emerged from the original cluster of fatalities we spotted. We can isolate and add just a cluster of events contained by the annotation back to emphasize this relationship. We can remove unimportant flights in order to concisely capture our observation. This is a great snapshot we can use to convey the impact of travel on the spread of the disease. We can retype our previous call annotation and make a new one without disturbing our previous snapshot. As previously mentioned, additional clusters were found in Thailand and in Argentina. Knowing that travel to a region with a high incidence of swine flu related fatalities could have been responsible for the international spread of the flu, we can now warn the public and other health organizations of travel to these regions as it may increase the spread of the disease. We can communicate this data by exporting our report in standard HTML format. Our exported report captures all the observations and analysis we performed in GeoTime. On April 27th, we observed that swine flu reached the WHOS criteria for pandemic level 4. Then, we spotted a second geographic cluster which elevated swine flu to WHO pandemic level 5. Filtering for fatal instances of swine flu, we found another significant cluster in Mexico. We later used the snapshot of this cluster to correlate swine flu and patterns of travelers known to spread the disease. We concluded that the spread of the disease is in large part due to the cluster found in Mexico.